Our next speaker is Pierre Dadjo. Uh, il, il est le directeur exécutif, conseil économique et social d'Ottawa Carleton. He, his topic this evening, or this evening, I'm thinking it's, it's evening, I'm already thinking of the, the television show. The topic this morning is immigrant, Immigrants, Struggles for Economic Integration in Canada, the Case of African Descendants. Please welcome Pierre Dadjo. Good morning. I am happy to be here and to share with you my thinking about uh, the economic situation of black people in general and African descendants in particular. Um, I have to express that uh, I should be happy to see more black people here, but that is the case, and uh, we can enjoy in this more small group discussions about the different topics. My thoughts comes from my experience with uh, my grandmother. I have been living here about 20, more than 20 years. And uh, I was raised up by my grandmother. And she used to tell me, she used to say often that you cannot choose your origin of birth, but you can decide where to live your life. And uh, for my grandmother, this has a very deep meaning because in those days, leaving your village or your country is not a good thing. So she had a kind of very revolutionary mind. And uh, for her, she can tell you, she can tell me about the importance of working hard to make life better. For her, the money you make and the money you spend define your ability to free yourself from poverty and gain people respect and consideration. She used to tell me that if I want the respect of others, I must own this by my own effort to build a good reputation in my society. She was the elder child among 14 and the only daughter. So she bears, she bears the weight of being big sister. She knew family value and appreciated it very much. Nevertheless, she used to say that family should never be a barrier for self-emancipation. Our esteemed family should never be a burden for us. She worked hard to take care of her children after the death of her husband, my grandfather. And she passed away more than 28 years now, and uh, still having the respect of many for her attitude and her work in the family. So after more than 20 years as immigrant in Canada, I come to the conclusion that uh, something should and must change in my own way of thinking and doing things. And I believe as we all continue in the same path as uh, black people, or immigrants mostly, I thought this presentation may be helping you to view your own way of living and to change what is necessary. We can talk a little bit about uh, the demostat that uh, in summarizing is that uh, the numbers continue to grow. As uh, we see in the introduction by uh, Adrien, we are not in 76, we are 2011, and we can see clearly that in our days, seeing a black in the road walking is not anymore mystery. 
is not anymore something strange. It's something normal. But to see that in Ottawa here, Ottawa, that you know, I will say, 16% uh, of the population are from what we call visible minority groups. Uh, and uh, from that number, we have about 29.5 who are immigrants from Africa, 12.1% from the Maghreb, and 3.7% from the Caribbean. And uh, with more than 4% of the total population, blacks are becoming one of the most important groups in our city. The retention rate in this metropolitan region is more than 90%. So we represent a good number of people in our city. But the question is, if we represent a good number, are we representing economically a good number of people? What is the state of our economic um, well-being? We have chosen to live in Canada. And uh, it doesn't matter what brought us to Canada. For sure, nobody forced us to become a citizen of such a great country. This morning, I would like to talk about uh, our financial well-being in our city. There is no doubt that uh, we face a lot of barriers in employment and occupy the lowest position in job hierarchy. We are also among the group ranking lowest in Canadian income pyramid. I believe that we should start to think differently if we want to end our marginalization in our city. We need to act differently in mind to build better future for ourselves and for our children. We are known as members of the diaspora. And uh, Boloko just talked about diaspora. And I believe that uh, our thinking is in tune more with our country of birth than with Canada and our well-being here. What should be our choice? Being, thinking, and acting Canadian on a full-time basis or being immigrant and living the nightmare of our origin and our inability to settle in our new country and to be useful to our country of birth. What impact may this choice have on our lives? Being African in the diaspora or citizen of Canada or both? This is a big struggle and challenges for us. I, there's studies that show that uh, it takes about five years for newcomers, especially refugee status immigrants, to get affordable job situation in our city. We just hear about uh, the poverty rate and African immigrants mostly choose to go back to school and hope that with another university degree, they may have better employment opportunities. Feel like a mechanic, welder, a construction, electrical, and so on, are not much explored as opportunities for economic integration. Small business are selling hot dog on the sidewalks in the city are not usual thing to see in our community. We may have more than 25% unemployment, but it seems to me that we still have 75% have kind of jobs. 